Om Namah Shivaya students. Today we are going to start with Legal Studies Class 11 Unit 1 Theory and Nature of Political Institutions Chapter 4 Part 2 Basic Features of the Constitution of India. In the previous session we had a discussion about the introduction to the constitution as well as the derivation of the term constitution and meaning of the constitution as well as the definition of the constitution. In this session we will have a discussion about the historical perspective of Indian constitution. Historical perspective of the Indian constitution. Students before we start with the features of the Indian constitution we must read about the history of the uh, India before independence. Before independence India was the part of the British colonial empire that means the British rule was established over India, Britishers were ruling over India and sovereignty of the British crown prevailed over India. Parliament of Britain enacted several legislations that means have enacted several laws for the governance of India. Some of the significant legislations of the British Parliament responsible for the governance of India were the Government of India Act of 1858, Indian Council Act of 1861. The Indian Council Act of 1892, the Indian Council Act of 1909, the Government of India Act of 1919, Government of India Act 1935. So these are the legislations for the governance of India passed by the British Council in England. But most important was the Government of India Act of 1935 from where most of the features of the constitution of India today which we are having has been derived. Now here you can see the picture above Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru moves the resolution for an independent sovereign republic in the constituent assembly in New Delhi after independence. Now in the words of Durga Das Basu as stated in his book Introduction to the Constitution of India, Indian constitution draws much of its source from Government of Indian Act of 1935. The Government of India Act 1935 has provided the administrative details and language to the provisions of the constitution. Unlike the other government of India acts, the act of 1935 referred to India as a federation of provinces and Indian states. Autonomy to provinces was given effect by dividing legislative executive powers between the provinces and the center. That means the centralized administrative system was practiced in British India. The province were under the executive authority of the governor appointed by the crown at the center. Provinces were the autonomous units of administration in India. Governor exercised the powers on the advice of the ministers who were in turn responsible to the provincial legislature that means the law body in the provinces. Governor was given discretion to carry out certain functions without being bound by ministerial advice subject to the control of the governor general. As we have learnt in the history book till class 10. Uh, that governor general has been appointed by the British uh, government in India 
from England. On behalf of the crown, the governor generals functioned in the British Indian administration. At the centre level, government of India was under the executive authority of the governor general. Governor general was to act on the advice of the ministers of the central legislature who were in turn responsible to the central legislature. The executive council formed under the Government of India Act 1919 functioned as the council of ministers. Governor general even has discretionary functions to perform but subjects to the control of secretary of the state. That means the governor general though exercising a central position in British India, the powers of the governor general were dictated on to by the secretary of the state. Now according to the source, Gwalior Library puts original copy of the Constitution of India on display. The central library in Gwalior boasts of a prized and priceless position. The original bound copy of the Constitution of India on the occasion of 61st Republic Day, the library authorities displayed the historical document for the public view and random reference. It is said that due to the lack of good printing facilities during the late 1940s, the constitution was composed using lithographic machine and the constituent assembly members affixed their signatures to, adore, to endorse the constitution of India. The pages were made with double golden borders on all sides while the central library has more than 1,11,891 books properly classified and well preserved in various cells. The original bound copy of the constitution of India has been kept separately in a wooden box and wrapped in a muslin cloth. As per the records, the library purchased this copy on March 31st, 1956 for Rs 120, which is now viewed as deemed as a priceless treasure by historians. This original copy of the Constitution of India has been compiled in lithography and has golden polished alphabets. It contains 255 articles and signatures of 285 members. The library bought the copy of the constitution in 1956 and then it was priced at Rs 120. Now it has become priceless for us and we keep it very safely, said R.S. Mahor, the librarian. Now this is about the constitution of India that has been made by the efforts of the constituent assembly and has been completed finally in two years of time. About this we will read in detail further in the chapter. Now the government of India assumed the role of federal government. The central legislature was bicameral consisting of federal assembly and council of states that means two bodies were there at of the legislature that is why it is called bicameral legislature some of the provincial legislatures had bicameral legislatures as well that means in the provinces also some provinces had two houses of the legislature and were referred to as bicameral legislature and other provinces had unicameral that means single chamber of the legislature. The legislative powers and matters were divided between the central legislature and the provincial legislatures. The 
powers assigned to the central legislatures and provincial legislatures were included in the federal list, provincial list respectively. That means the powers of the respective levels of the government were included in federal list and provincial list respectively. The center and the provinces could exercise their power combined on matters included in the concurrent list. Now details about this three list, federal list, it dealt with matters such as currency, external affairs, armed forces, etc. on which central legislature had the authority to legislate. Provincial list, it dealt with matters such as education, public health and agriculture, etc. on which only provincial legislature had the authority to legislate. Concurrent list, it dealt with matters such as marriage and divorce, criminal law, civil law and procedures, etc. on which both federal and provincial legislature had authority to legislate. Now about the exercise of the legislative powers, the exercise of the legislative powers was subject to various limitations. What are the limitations? Number one, Governor Generals and the Crown's power to veto a bill passed by the legislature. Number two, Governor General's power to issue ordinance and permanent acts when the legislative house was not in session. Number three, Governor General's power to suspend legislature if the proceedings with, would affect the discharge of his special responsibilities. Number four, no bill to amend or repeal the law of the British Parliament as applicable in India can be introduced in legislature without the previous sanction of Governor General. So, these are the limitations put on to the exercise of the legislative powers by the Governor General and the Crown that means the government of Britain. Thus, the central legislature and similarly the provincial legislatures were to act under the instructions of Governor General, Secretary of State and ultimately the sovereign powers of the British Crown. Indians were given very limited rights of the self-governance. Now growing dissatisfaction over limited governing rights granted to Indians under 1935 act led to widespread protest in India against the Britishers. Eventually, the colonial government conceded that the constitution of India would be framed by an elected constituent assembly consisting of Indian people. It also framed the constitution of India. On December 9, 1946, the Constituent Assembly, a body elected by the members of the provincial legislatures and state legislatures met for the first time and formally commenced the task of constitution making for India. So, this is about the history of the constitution of India. In the next session, Unit 1, Chapter 4, Part 3, we will continue further with the basic features of the constitution of India. Om Namah Shivaya.